great, wonderful. So I appreciate being here. Uh, let me go to uh, the uh, overview here. This is what we're going to cover this afternoon and uh, in terms of Dropbox. We're going to discuss what is Dropbox, how to set up a Dropbox account, and I'm actually going to do this live from scratch. And, and Jeff, I have road tested this about five times, so I know it's going to work. Good. But really, my goal overall on this webinar is I want people in the audience watching and watching the recording later on to get a real feel in live time what it's like to sign up for Dropbox, set up an account, how to use Dropbox for storing your computer data, how syncing works. And for, for people that are new to this, when you're working with multiple devices, it can be a little bit confusing. So we're going to cover that. Also, this is a big thing, sharing Dropbox folders. Uh, I do this for my societies. Believe it or not, Dropbox is now the place where we collaborate on documents. We're no longer emailing documents back and forth and having to merge different versions. And so I'm going to show you how to share Dropbox folders. And I'm going to try and convince Jeff into helping me out with that. Uh, more on the overview. Uh, we're going to talk about the uh, Dropbox delete, undo, and delete. And undelete is what I should say, uh, which has been a lifesaver for me. Uh, how to use a Dropbox website. There is an application component you install on your computer, but there's also the Dropbox website. How to manage your Dropbox account. Uh, how to deal with legacy family tree data and Dropbox. It can be a little bit tricky, and uh, we're going to cover that. Also, how to break through that free two gigabyte barrier. Two gigabytes is what Dropbox offers you for free. But there are some workarounds where actually you could wind up with eight gigabytes of storage for free, believe it or not. So the syllabus. I want to let everyone know the syllabus is going to be available with the purchase of the CD recording. Uh, and this syllabus, I really put my heart and soul into it. It is 18 pages. It has step-by-step instructions, it has screen captures, so you're going to understand uh, what you should be seeing on your own computer. So the syllabus also has some great links to Dropbox add-ins, articles about Dropbox, etc. So I, I want to point that out. So in terms of introduction, I want people to imagine if you could create an online data repository where you could almost store any type of data. So then the next thing is also Put it in the cloud. Put it out there on the internet where you could access it anywhere in the world as long as you had an internet connection. The next thing is now you want to add the ability to connect different devices to that same cloud so that all your data is synchronized once you update one file. It would be updated on all devices at the same time. So going further, now you want to add the ability to share data folders with other users. And finally, let's say that this whole thing that we're creating is going to have two gigabytes of data and it's going to be free, believe it or not. Does such a resource exist? Yes, it does. It's called Dropbox. And that's what we're here to learn today. So what exactly is Dropbox? Well, Dropbox is a data repository and these are some of the things that you can do and that I'm going to show you today. You can back up your data. Include all your, including all the genealogy data to an online repository. You can store data in the cloud, which we've talked about this concept. You can also make data available offline, and this is what I love about it. You don't have to always be connected to Dropbox. Your data resides on your hard drive of your computer or your device. The other things that Dropbox can do is data is available to you on a variety of devices no matter where you are, as long as you have an internet connection. You can synchronize that data across different devices, uh, the laptop, the netbook, even a mobile. Uh, I have it on my iPhone. It, it exists for the Android as well. Share data with other users. This is great if you're in a research group or a genealogy society or even family members. You can share a folder. So now we're going to deal with how to set up a Dropbox account, OK? And uh, Dropbox is free. I want to point that out. It actually works on a freemium concept. And the thing we're going to cover right now, and I'm going to go out live to the web, is creating an account. 
in downloading and installing the Dropbox application. So let's go out to the web. Everyone should be seeing my Google Chrome screen right now. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go to www.dropbox.com. That is the URL. And this is what you're going to see. They will let you watch a video if you want to take a tour before you do anything. You come up here, and the thing that gets confusing, it says log in. It doesn't say create account. You have to come down here to say create an account. And this is what we're going to do. This is the screen you should see. I have screen captures for all of this in the syllabus, plus you can watch this recording later. But let's say we're dealing with our favorite genealogists, Anne and Toffel. Uh, and that's an inside joke, I guess. And uh, so we're going to set the account up for Ann and Toppel. And you have to have a valid email address. And I do have one set up on Gmail for Ann and Toppel at gmail.com. Then you have to pick a password. So those of you that attended my last one, you know what my password's going to start with, right? And uh, so you know my rules for uh, passwords. And you could say, remember me if you want to or not. And you're going to go ahead and create an account. And that's it. You have an account. Uh, that was my Google Chrome popping up up there. But look at what happens right away. And I want you to realize this. You're going to be prompted to download an application. And for me, in Windows 7, it pops up here. For those of you on Windows XP, uh, Windows 2000, uh, Windows Vista, the syntax may look a little bit different, but you will have to install a file. So I'm going to go ahead and save it. I'm going to follow the instructions that Windows 7 says to do. And basically, you notice it's going to take about 40 minutes here. Uh, 40 seconds, not minutes. Gosh, we would uh, not be finished with the webinar if that were the case. So in the meantime, if I wanted to, I could come over to Google, sign in as Anantoffel, right? And check my email and see what I got from, uh, from Dropbox. And all it is basically is is a uh, welcome email. And I just want to point out what this looks like while we're waiting for the download to finish. Hey Thomas, while you're waiting while you're waiting for that, is uh, sure. uh, some have asked, does this work on a Mac? It does work on a Mac, which okay. is wonderful. Which Good. is really wonderful. Thank you. So they're all they're all Mac compatible, and they do talk about that. So basically, you, this is one of the situations, rare situations, Jeff, where you don't have to confirm your email. A lot of programs ask you to go and confirm your email. All they're going to send you is a welcome email in Gmail, and do that. So uh, we are so now we are totally uh, downloaded here, and we're going to install the application. I'm going to run it according to the directions of my uh, program. And it's going to say, I want to install. And this is going to take a little bit of time. And I, uh, and, uh, I do want to make sure that everyone knows that that is installing. And this is where you're going to say, OK. I don't have a Dropbox account, or I already have a Dropbox account. The nice thing is we already set one up. It was under our email address. And you have to remember your password. And this is a computer name. I do want to point this out, Jeff. I usually don't change this name. I let it be. My, every computer device usually already has a name, so I'm not going to fool with this. I'm going to leave it as this name. Because this is the way it identifies your computer and say next. Now this is where the pitch starts. Remember we said two gigabytes is free. Actually there are other plans here, 50 gigabytes or 100 gigabytes for this pricing per month. You do not have to say, you do not have to pay for Dropbox. You can always upgrade later on. You do not need to make this decision right now. And what I also recommend is that for beginners, go with the typical 
uh, installation and setup. You can always change your Dropbox account settings later on. Uh, this gets kind of confusing for newcomers. If you want to go to advanced, I don't recommend it. Stay with typical. Go to install. And then that's it. Basically, you're done. If you want, you can take this tour that they have you on. I'm going to skip the tour because I want to make sure we save our time for the webinar. And boom. And now your computer is linked to Dropbox. I'm going to spend a little bit of time here. I want to show people what has happened. We've got a notification. Okay. We also have a new icon in our uh, task manager down here. And if you hover over, it's called Dropbox. Uh, under my favorites, I have a new folder called Dropbox, and this is what's in it. And if I were to look under C, uh, probably documents and settings, my username, and there it is, Dropbox. And that would be the same information. All this is up here is a shortcut for me. So now, Jeff, we've, we've signed up for an account. We have it installed, right? So we're pretty much all set to go. And I'm going to return back to my slideshow and wait for uh, the webinar to catch up here. Two things right here. Now, we get into using Dropbox. How are you going to use Dropbox? How are you going to get your data into Dropbox up on that cloud? And what does it mean once it's up there? So there are several ways in which you can initially place data files into your Dropbox. Okay? You can use Windows Explorer, which is what I was just using, that, that program. And, and Jeff, I want to be clear to people, and I make this clear in the syllabus. When I say Windows Explorer, I'm not talking about Internet Explorer, which you use.